going back to nature is a brilliant thing to do and particularly the fact that you've um i'm actually really intrigued with this book because i think my daughter would love to read that book <laughs> and um oh uh, listen uh, how old is your daughter 11 oh uh, she'll love it because it's it's pitched from a very young age to to an age like perhaps your daughter a little bit older but it's the idea of um the illustrations truly complement the text and, and even for younger children, it's beautiful that perhaps somebody older can sit down with them and read it to them. And mm. I, received, um, I received actually many reviews from people out there and people that I may know and people sometimes that I don't know. And somebody wrote to me saying, uh, I got your little angel's book. And, um, and my daughter and granddaughter were sitting in the back seat and the little girl was really unsettled. And, uh, and she said, I'll pick up from the pocket the My Little Angels Talk To Me book and start reading it to Alina. And suddenly Alina settled down and she dropped them off at the train station. They took the book and the mother sent her a picture of the little girl opening the book and pretending to read because she was only two. And Aww. the only thing that she could say was, love angels, love angels. And, uh, and that really warms your heart because then you know that all the time and effort that you put together, and, and I'm rather meticulous as a person, I want to see all the de little details that actually resonate at such a soul level with a young child that they only need to have a look at that illustration and think, I get it. <clears throat> mm. And I think it's um, also getting children to connect on such a different well, I suppose it's on a gentle level as well. Um, yes. I don't. I feel that connecting through that way, like my daughter has angel cards, and mm -hmm. just by reading those, they're almost like they sort of uh, confidence bruise, uh, boosters as well. They sort of like have a an inner confidence boost, and I'm not quite sure whether it's from the words pictures what or however it comes across but find that there's a lot of confidence and obviously in that little girl there was confidence there because she thought she was reading the book even though she was repeating the same words mm. as well and it's the idea that you know what when you're giving information to children and particularly the young ones um they don't really put any barriers to it they mm. just they will take it and they will take it as it is uh, and sometimes they will challenge it, but because children are brutally honest. And uh, and when I put the book out there, I just thought, okay, well, let's see what they say. And um, because kids will not, will let you know in no uncertain terms whether they like it or not. And it was actually really well received. And when we did our book launch um, in December last year, the idea of the book launch was... We did it outdoors. We had picnic blankets and beautiful cushions. And the parents were sitting there with, uh, with the little kids. And Sonia and I did a little bit of an introduction about the book, but then we passed it on to her beautiful little angel, Sienna. And she was sitting there with beautiful little angel white wings. And she read a couple of stories to the kids. And the kids were following the story by opening up the book and getting engaged. And a couple of them even asked questions. So that was a beautiful way to introduce our, our piece of work into the world and into the world of children. Oh, beautiful. And so <clears throat> if anyone wants to purchase any of your books, yes. um, where's, where's the best place to sort of, um, where can you actually buy them? Okay, if you go directly to my um, Facebook page, Raul Estevez Author, you're going to find the a shop now button okay. that will take you into the online store for my publisher and the publisher is Wildlight Publishing House. Oh, yes. um, otherwise, particularly My Angels Connections, a book that is written for, for adults and teenagers as well, that's actually distributed by, it's still uh, published by Wildlight Publishing House, but it's distributed by 39,000 distributors worldwide. So you, for that book, you really just go to Google and type My Angels Connections and you will see that it will pop up or even Raul Estevez and it will pop up. It's available in the States on Barnes and & Noble, Angus and & Robinson in Australia. Um, I don't know, you name it. Amazon, everywhere is on Kindle. Just everywhere. On every, yeah, it's, 
I remember talking to my niece in the States, in America, and I said, oh, you know, my book is on Barnes & Noble, and Barnes & Noble in America is about 640 stores. And she said wow. to me, okay, wait a minute. So she went into her computer and typed it up, and she goes to me, oh, my God, you are famous. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> and, and that makes you realize okay at least i made it with my niece <laughs> the rest of the fame who knows but it, it makes you realize that despite everything that i say about going outside and all of that technology has its advantages because it really allows you to get out there and be accessible absolutely it spreads the word a lot quicker doesn't it that's, yeah. that's, that's so neat but um <laughs> Because I had a bit of a, um, a look through your sites as well. Because um, with Crystal Crystal Blue Butterfly, where about mm. did you, where did that name come from? What okay, made you, good question. Yeah, mm, good question. Thank you. The insp inspiration behind it. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a story, and then I'll give you the link to that because that's what it will make sense to people about the Crystal Blue Butterfly. Um, my mother passed away 29 years ago. And I was actually studying, we were living in Sydney at the time, and I was at the uh, New South Wales State Library, and in those days, there were no mobile phones. Um, Mum was already ill at Westmead Hospital uh, in the oncology area, and I received um, a call on the loudspeaker of the library, and I went to the library desk to find out my sister at the other end saying, please um, come as quickly as you can to the hospital. So, so I did. I went there and she was surrounded by family members and uh, I approached her and she was truly waiting for me. And as I approached her, she whispered in my ear, Raul, every time you see a butterfly, it will bring a beautiful message from me to you. And she handed me a gift at that time and it was a little box, which I opened later. And, uh, and after she delivered that message and that little box to me, she closed her eyes and went. Um, butterflies had been around me, particularly in poignant moments in my life. And I was, I was in a country where uh, I was going to teach at a university they sent there by the Australian government. And it was snowing. And I went outside for a walk before my... I needed to deliver that training session to, to teachers. And, uh, and I thought I just need to clear my mind and get out there and, and feel the fresh air, although it was snowing. And a beautiful black and white butterfly just flew around me twice and then it flew away. And I just look around to see, can any, is, is anybody here going to be my witness to this? And in those days, there were no mobile phones that so you can take a picture. And I mm. left my digital camera in the hotel room. So I just thought, it doesn't really matter. I saw it. And every country that I've been, I was always being welcomed by a butterfly. The other day, we went, a couple of weeks ago, my partner, Wayne, and I went to um, the book launch of Journey of a Light Worker. And I live in Ballarat in Victoria, in Australia. And as we closed the gate, a white butterfly just flew around us, and it was rather chilly in Ballarat. Mm -hmm. uh, and for that white butterfly to be there, it was a huge effort. And flew around us a couple of times and left, and I got the message, and I usually look up and I say, thank you. In a previous book launch, another white butterfly flew in between me and the audience because my Angels Connections was also launched outdoors. And some people in the audience that knew the story said to me, oh my God, Raul, did you see the butterfly? And I said, yes, I did. And I looked up in the sky and I said, thank you. And to name Crystal Blue Butterfly, the business after that name, I just one evening I went to sleep and I asked the angels to come into my dreams and to help me find the name. And immediately that name came across and I woke up and I put that name forward to my partner and I said, what do you think? And he said, well, there's no doubt. Let's go with it. So crystal blue butterfly hatch from its cocoon. Oh, beautiful. And it's almost like it's crystal clear as well. You, you definitely is. know your, your, your message is that it's crystal clear. And the blue, you know, if you go to the chakra side of things, it's like it's your voice, you know, you, your, your voice is out there. So it's, like, it's, it's just amazing. It's just so nice to be able to see things in nature that, are, um, that you see as signs like, 
for some reason, I actually, <laughs> mine aren't quite butterflies, but they're crows. <laughs> I have a lot of crows at the moment. Um, so it's, it's, <clears throat> it's quite amazing um, when you actually acknowledge that, that there's a, an, a message in or a confirmation in um, something that you resonate with, like for yourself as, with butterflies, whereas I resonate with birds. Yes. And um, and it's amazing how, for me, birds are very noisy at a particular time. Yes. Um, and it's poignant to what's going on in life at the time. So it's it's quite quite amazing, isn't it? I, I think yes. that um, paying attention to nature, uh, it's it's quite beautiful. But at, at times it can actually be confronting because it actually lets you know. Um, Stop moaning about and get on with it because you know what? Mm. Sometimes you plant a seed, and uh, and the other day we just walking by here, and there were a, a week before they were just putting asphalt that tar on not only on the road but on the on the footpath before they finish it, and a little plant just sprouts through that, and it pushes itself through all of that with such force, and there it was the little plant. And with a little yellow flower, and you think, come on, if a little seed and a little plant can actually do that, there's so many things that we can actually do if we really put our mind and effort into it. It's just about um, wanting to do something with all your might, but really from a place of love. Absolutely. And it's quite funny you said that about seed. I actually have an air plant and a crystal, and it's like it just grows on the crystal. <laughs> And I like, love there's no that. soil, <laughs> and it's like it just grows pretty much from nothing, really. Um, the energy of the crystal, I guess, is mm. resonating with the plant quite well. Yeah, I actually rescued that from a shop. It was a bit sad looking, a bit dull, and I've put it into a specific specific space where even the amethyst that it's grown in has actually darkened up, which is much better. But um, it, it's it's quite but what a, a lovely, it, what a lovely sorry. thing to do to rescue a plant. Everybody talks about rescuing animals. And I love animals. We used to have a dog, uh, Emilio, Emilio Esteves. Uh, and <laughs> he's, he lived with us since six weeks old to 16 years. Wow. Uh, but that idea of um, rescuing a plant, I never heard somebody saying that. And you just said it, and it actually resonated with me because sometimes you go to a, I don't know, to a, a, a nursery uh, to look for different plants. And if you see it all that wilty, you go, mm, no, continue and find something that you want. But you just actually thought about rescuing the plant, and that's beautiful. Well, it's actually quite funny because I'm notorious for, like, I've got a lot of um, succulents in my garden, but I am notorious for actually killing plants. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I grew you were up. angelically guided to say, this plant needs your help. <laughs> don't well, kill it's actually, it. <laughs> well, it's actually quite funny because I'd been to my, my son and his partner's place in September last year, and they had one of those, um, I think they were a peace lily or something. And when I went there, it had like masses of beautiful white flowers. And I'm like, I can never get mine to flower. And <laughs> and anyway, I went there like probably a month later. And he, they've got out their front door this shriveled up, dead looking plant. And I went, oh, my goodness, why are you throwing it out? She said, because it's toxic because she's pregnant, toxic to babies, toxic to cats. <laughs> so she doesn't want it. And, and it was dead. And I said, oh, no, I'm going to take it home. So I've actually rescued that. And ironically, the one that I did have that never flowered actually <laughs> died, but this one has flourished. So I was obviously it. supposed to have that. So um, I sort of do take pride in the fact that I have actually managed to keep some plants alive. Um, yeah, but I, tend I think to go it's been a it's been a, a turnaround, and the message is quite clear: you don't kill plants; you can actually save them. <laughs> yeah, I can indeed. I can indeed. I have some su successful fruiting ones out in my backyard at the moment. <laughs> So, yeah. Now, someone's asked me what sort of crystal have you got, the plant, and I've got my in an amethyst. Mm. It's, um, and it was quite funny when I went to this particular, it's actually a cafe, and they've got mm. all bits of trinkety things, and just looking at all their crystals, and I don't know if you ever feel that. It's like sometimes they feel really quite sad crystals. They're, like, mm. doing their mm. job. Mm. And, um, yeah, I think we somebody else bought one. I think I bought one for someone else as well. But it's... Um, yeah, it seemed to have livened up quite a bit of how crystals can change too with the energy that they are around. But also it's beautiful that you gave the crystal a purpose, um, mm. not just to be there, look pretty and send you lovely energy, but also, yeah, with that energy to help another being. Um, grow. 
Yeah, indeed. Yes, yes, Tracy. My am- amethyst is my favourite as well. I was blessed. <laughs> I was actually blessed to have two beautiful pieces for my fiftieth birthday this year. One, one of the big um, crystal caves, and oh, yes. then my brother sent me this gorgeous um, piece from um, America, and it's beautifully shaped as well. And it sits on my desk. I'm actually just looking at it right now. But yeah, amethyst is beautiful. That with selenite. That's my two favourite. Uh, I've got favorite. a beautiful selenite wand. It's kind of like a spiral. And funnily enough, amethyst is really prolific in the country where I was born, in Uruguay. A lot of the caves that we see here in Australia, they're actually being brought in from that country, which is, yeah, ah. it just blows your mind. I actually have friends from Uruguay. It's quite unusual to hear Uruguay being mentioned. It's not a well, common country to be mentioned. Yeah. No, but it's a, it's a country that it, at the time that I left, is, the population was only about 3 million. And I'm, I don't know what it is now because I'm truly detached. But, um, yeah, it's not, it's not huge. <laughs> we, come from both, we both come from little countries then. I come from New Zealand. <laughs> uh, yeah, but New Zealand is... is I see it as a bigger country than Uruguay because of the, on the map of the extension of the different islands. If you have mm. a look at Uruguay, it's, mm. it's truly tiny, a little spot in between two big countries. But um, True. hey, yeah. from little things, big things grow. We have lots of sheep, apparently. So, <laughs> <laughs> what's with the, that? Everybody, it's a standard joke. Makes, I know, but everybody makes <laughs> New jokes Zealand about jokes about sheep. 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 <laughs> yes, sheep, there's more sheep than people. Like when I moved yeah. over here, there's still only about 3 million people in New Zealand and there's probably about double that in sheep. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I still, yeah. yeah. We Funny won't go story. into what they joke no, about. Not, you probably heard it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just thinking of a next, prime, uh, a next New Zealand prime minister that she was trying to bring a tax with, to do with sheep and I just that came into my mind. That was quite funny. <laughs> Yeah, oh, my my one of my sons, his nickname over here because they got harassed for being Kiwis, and his, <laughs> his, his nickname still to this day is Sheepy. So it's um, oh, poor he's, baby. <laughs> uh, he's, yeah, his friends are good, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> I just want to ask you something um, in regards to um, the modalities that you teach. Mm. You teach them, don't you? What's yes. quantum? Bioenergetics, if you could explain that to me, because I was quite intrigued by that. Certainly. Um, it took me a couple of years to actually uh, to learn that and to go through the processes. It's not as simple as, as other modalities, perhaps. To make a quick comparison that people will actually get their heads around it is similar and I'm using the word similar very loosely, um, to Reiki, but it's uh-huh. hands off. Uh, you don't touch the client. The client could actually be either seated or it could be on a massage table. But virtually, you are just tuning in into the quantum frequencies that each person has. And you link those frequencies to yours. And by a set of different movements, as you move around the body of the person, you are tuning in with that energy. And at the beginning, I tune in and I see where the chakras are out of alignment and I bring them into that balance. And then I tune in to different parts of the body and see what they actually tell me and how do I resonate with that. And it's, if I could give a, on radio a visual, it's like imagine I'm not touching, but with my hands really... The anatomy of the hand, the way that it is, you don't need to put it in any specific shape. But imagine like just pulling that energy from the body onto your hand and stretching that as a rubber band. But you have to be extremely careful that 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 rubber band is not going to snap. Otherwise, the person will feel that snap. And when you are Mm -hmm. learning, you realize that because people will tell you, oh, what, what happened? It's that you're snapping. So you need to be rather careful on the way that you tune in to that quantum frequency in order to clear that area. I'm not here to say to people, and that's what is called a balancing technique. Um, This is, if I find something, for example, that is highlighted and I will say, well, I see something in your liver or your lungs or whatever it may be. Um, 
I'm obliged to actually recommend the person to go and see a GP and take it from there. Uh, the frequency will tell me that it's truly out of balance, and I will try and bring that energetic balance into it. But as I usually say to people, and my personal beliefs in angels, and I usually say, please remember that the creator, source, God, whatever you want to call it, it also created angels on earth. So there's nothing wrong to go and see in a doctor or a dentist or whoever you need to see as a specialist in order to actually get yourself sorted because that gives purpose to everybody on this earth. Um, there's nothing wrong with seeing alternative modalities, but I'm not here to say, hey, you know what, I can cure cancer. Although some people may say that, but I do not subscribe mm-hmm. to that to that mm-hmm. idea. Mm-hmm. It's just quite interesting that how you d- do that um, modality because I'm um, like I'm um, a Reiki master <clears throat> excuse me, and I, all the way through Reiki, I've never been one to touch people. Okay, and I've always it. always have my hands um, wherever the energy field is. Like some mm. people are a lot closer than others, but um, and work that way with the Reiki. But um, in saying that, I did actually have a client last week where I actually was actually um, guided to actually put my hands directly on them mm-hmm. and. I'll give you a quick snippet what happened to me during this. Like, um, I have a, a statue of Kuan Yin here, but I don't actually really even think of her, go into it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But what happened through that actual um, healing is um, she appeared <laughs> and <laughs> and I had to message to the person that I was heal- doing the Reiki or whatever it ended up being, I'm not quite sure. And I actually physically had to put my hands on this person in a couple of different spaces. Mm. Um, but whatever was coming through, it was quite different for me because it was, I would say it was almost like channeled because I had channeled. to do it in yeah, a different yes. tense. And um, the fact that she was standing there and as soon as I acknowledged her, then the words came through. So um, energy is quite amazing. It comes in so many different forms and and if you're open to these sorts of things and how they come through, what you thought you knew, I'm not sure if you have that with what you do is what you thought you knew and then all of a sudden something sort of changes gears a bit. Um, yes, it has happened to me as well and it has happened on the way that I approach the use of the modality. And I remember the way that I was introduced to, to this, it was just, um, yeah, really... Um, really weird because one night we were living in in Melbourne at the time and one night I couldn't sleep and I just tuned in on to to Channel 31 in Melbourne, that community uh, station on television and there was this lady being interviewed that she was kind of like the master of this quantum bioenergetics balancing technique and I watched for an hour and I thought I don't know why, I don't know how or when, but I need to learn this. And it was that idea that I just, my soul knew that I needed to be a part of that. And uh, and I did my, my investigation, and as I said, it took me two years to become an advanced facilitator in order to, uh, to make certain that you're going to be using it to the best of your abilities and with the potential that... that the yeah, quantum bioenergetics can actually produce between you and your client and I usually said even by doing a healing on a client and it may happen to you as well Janet as a Reiki master is that you are healing yourself as well Mm. Um, you're going through that process together yes so to me it's um it's an integral part that to have a clear understanding of the modality and and do it to the best of your abilities but also I'm an educator by by trade for many years as well, but also it's is to be able to use something without having to have the guidebook next to you at all the time and to listen to your inner voice, your intuition, mm. to listen to whatever you are receiving, like you said, okay, well, Quan Ji was coming through and I have to acknowledge and go mm. with that. And I'm all for that because nothing is clear cut. Everything is um, flexible, and you can use that flexibility to uh, to bring the best out of the modality in order to give the best healing to the person that you're dealing with. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to have to ask you some other questions a little bit off this, 
Um, no and in regards to anything um, in the mediumship side of things, um, mm-hmm. even even the the spooky ghostly side of things, do you mm-hmm. experience with even though this is all to me, it's very gentle energy on mm-hmm. the the um, like flower therapy, angel card mm-hmm. readings, the quanto. Do you experience anything else outside I, of that? Yes, I have had, and I have had quite a few experiences. Um, back in 1996, um, I got, people will ask me when I became a, an educator, uh, oh, what do you do for a living? And I used to say, instead of teaching, because the idea of teaching didn't quite fit with me, uh, I used to say, um, I help people learn, because that was the idea that you integrate, you put yourself in the equation rather than to be about people. And they said, oh, so what do you want to do? And I said, well, you know what? I really want to travel the world. And people said, oh, come on, Raul. Teachers don't travel the world. And I thought, okay, never mind. I will make it happen. And in 1996, I got my first gig um, teaching trainers in, uh, in Malaysia. And the night before my first session, my voice went and there was nothing. And I just thought, oh, my God, please help me. And I just sat there quietly. And suddenly, and it was spooky to me at the time because the connection was so strong. Suddenly, I felt two hands around my throat, around my neck. And they were not hands that were choking me, but I could actually feel them. That if Mm. that hands were to choke me, they could have. But because I allowed them, and I could feel that warmth, and I thought, I'm starting to burn. And the energy kind of like in my, through my mind and intuition was saying, just stay there, we just, we're just going to do our thing. And that energy left me about, I don't know, a few minutes later, and somebody knocked at my hotel door, and I went to answer, and suddenly I spoke. So wow. to me, it was rather... <laughs> It was rather that energy. It was spooky at the time because I thought, what did just happen? And although I've been in touch with angels all of my life, um, when you ask for help, spirit will deliver it to you in many different forms. And I could feel the presence of somebody uh, just sitting there. And when I've actually closed the door, I went back onto that chair and I sat again. And I simply sat there and I asked who actually came through, and in uh, in my mind's eye, they were showing me. It was kind of like a healer, but it was considered like a doctor in in another, how can I put it, in another realm. It wasn't on Earth, but it was somebody that was able to heal people, and I asked for help, and that entity came through and gave me the gave me the healing and that was yeah it truly blew my mind wow and ha- that that's a, and the fact is too <clears throat> is what we've talked about um on previous shows is like you could have quite easily turned that into a really um scary negative like mm. fearful experience rather mm. than like allowing it so you you just allowed that to happen and it ended up being something very positive for you. Mm. Um, and that's how I think, you know, someone else could have had that happen and, and like really thought, wow, there's something really freaky there. I'm being possessed or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> and turned it around to something different. And and that's a really magical thing to do. And the fact that, you know, they've come through and done that to you, worked on your throat mm. chakra and, yes. you know, you're able to speak. And um, I can't, I don't think I've had anything like that. No, myself. To me, as I said to you, yeah, Jeanette, it was spooky at the time because I thought, what's really happening? And as I could feel the hands putting pressure on my throat, I thought, okay, whatever is happening here, is it gonna, is it gonna choke me? Or and and as I was asking those questions, and the questions were truly born out of fear and out of lack of understanding, uh, the message that came across was. No, just relax. I'm here to help you. And I went with that. I didn't actually put in a resistance. But the initial fear came through. It just was taken away by me truly asking a question and then receiving the answer and saying, okay, fine, 
you're not going to help me, you're going to help me, so then help me, please. And that's what I find, too, in a lot of, um, even uh, if you want to call it supernatural, whatever you want to call it, it's sort of out there experience where things can seem that spooky and like you've done if you keep asking questions and mm. and ex- and let the answers come in and that's quite amazing like <laughs> I have I'm not sure about you but I dream and the last couple of nights <clears throat> excuse me here's my throat shark is going to go today <laughs> <clears throat> As um, maybe I'm not supposed to talk about it. Like the night before was beautiful dream. Last night, um, I was actually dreaming like I was actually in bed as I was, mm. and and I was aware that there was an energy in the room. Yes. And I was actually quite freaking out, but I was still. It was really bizarre because it was like I was already. I was dreaming about exactly where I was, um, and the same night time and everything. And all these other things happened, but I just remember um, there was, I could hear somebody talking, but they yes. were guiding me, but yes. I couldn't see them. And um, it, it was all about this little star. And it's like, no, well, if you break, make your star brighter and bigger, then mm. you will be, you'll be safe, you'll be fine, everything will be all right. And there was other things in the dream, but in, and from that, as soon as that, I just sort of almost bolted out of bed and to the point was like, oh, my gosh, someone's in my house. And I actually literally had to sort of take my time and think, okay, so that I, just in case it was, and actually go through my whole entire house every um, – <clears throat> Yeah, maybe it does, James. James just said, maybe my throat chakra needs to be replaced. (laughs) (laughs) So I know where you're going with that, James. Um, (laughs) Maybe that's what the star was all about. But, yeah, I had to go through, and I think I was awake for about an hour, just sort of like, because it was very unnerving. Um, I don't know why, because it wasn't bad, if that makes sense, but I think it was just so real-like. It was just so real. And, uh, but nobody was in my house except for myself and who and the family that was supposed to be here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but you like, were having that vivid dream, and that's <clears throat> so important because it, it truly goes to show that you're truly in touch with that other realm. And it's, you're not imagining, it's not a joke, this is for real and it's coming through, and they are there with you, and that's why they're giving you those, those truly vivid dreams. And, uh, mm. yeah, cherish them because not many people actually get to experience those. Yeah, and like when people ask me, what was your dream about? It's like, well, do you really want to know because I really remember the details? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a couple of hours for me to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone asked me this morning, so what was your d- dream? And I'm like, oh, I could actually probably go on, but I sort of simplified it. <laughs> maybe, you need to, maybe you need to write a book about your dream. Well, actually, that's not a stupid idea, is it? No, it's not. No, no it's not. No. It's uh, Because you know what? What you have to share through your dreams, it's, they're important lessons not only to you, but to people that probably you will never meet, but mm. they will be waiting for those, those lessons and those pages to be read by them. And no one has actually taken the chance to do it. So uh, it's been given to you. So why not? Yeah, well, I actually used to write down my dreams, what I haven't done for a long time, but I do. I mean, you can just get normal dreams, which are just all over the place. But yeah. then, like the night before that one, I was actually um, in oh, the most amazing, beautiful, pure sea waters, you know, just so mm. crystal clear. Everything was just gorgeous color. And mm. I had those big, huge shells, you know, they're sort of like a pinky inward color, and, and yes. I think they can blow on them. And I remember having them, and they were just absolutely stunning. I had two, and I was just asking, I think they were like the islanders that were of that particular island, and I just said not to clean them as and get dirt off, but to clean them up so much that I could actually probably get them through customs and bring them to where I am here yes. and um, so that I could actually have them with me. But they were just absolutely stunning. And it's quite funny because I've just noticed this morning that I've gone around and I've been, I do actually have shells, not that big and beautiful. And for some reason, I've actually been um, shifting them around my house. Mm. <laughs> and I've actually yeah. come across quite a few shells and sort of re- one of them I'm actually washing. I need to wash it a bit more because it's been outside. But it's a bit weird that. <laughs> Not quite yeah, sure on it, that meaning. 
Well, the idea that, yeah, if you're talking about shells, the connection to the sea, that idea that um, for me, usually going to the water's edge is just putting my feet there is a sense of uh, purification, allowing whatever I don't need to go through the sole of my feet and then getting the beautiful energy back from the, from the water. And, mm. uh, and shells bring that way of, uh, as you were saying, people sometimes, those are the shells that tribes will blow on it to announce something, a way of communicating as well. Uh, mm. And that comes across on, the, on, on a shell. Yeah. Absolutely, and because that's what they were, they're the ones that you could actually blow on to, to communicate with, so maybe that's, uh, yes, James, my throat chakra, has, yes. <laughs> he's in the chat room, so, oh, just, okay. uh, <laughs> and it's sort of like, perhaps that's what it is, is like, uh, my throat chakra is going to be needing some work. <laughs> That's it. That's okay. I'm 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 all good with that. And yeah, yeah, I'm actually starting to like. I even got a blue phone cover, and I'm never drawn to blue, which is really funny. But anyway, it, it, well, if you if you were came to uh, if you been here in my house, uh, it's a blue explosion. But uh, but that's the color that I resonate with. My first cover of my first book is blue, and there's always yes. blue around, and uh, and people tend to give me things that are blue. So yes. Oh, and you were talking God. about the shell, and I just remember when I was in Italy and I went to um, to the little island of Murano, of Venice, where they do um, glass blowing. And I say, oh, yes. I, there was there was this chap in a, in, a, in a studio that I went off the beaten track in the little island, not where everybody else goes. And he says to me, would you like me to make you a, a, a piece of glass to take with you? And I said, I would love to. And he said, what color do you like? And I said, my favorite color is blue. And what do you want? And I said, whatever it actually comes through, it doesn't matter. And she, he actually did a beautiful blue shell, like the ones that you were describing mm. to blow and send a message. And I got that with me. Um, um, yeah, my home is always per prominent, so I can see it because that was, beautiful. although I paid for that, but it was a beautiful gift from an artist that it took time and effort to, to, to send me that, that message. Yeah. Wow, uh, I know that to a glass, my stepdaughter, she brought me home a piece of, like a piece of jewellery from when she was in Italy, mm. and uh, she was on a school trip, and it's like, is it Murano glass? Yeah, mm. absolutely yes. stunning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, no, it's incredible. Well, you know what, I think we're going to be coming up to a break, um, um, for probably just less than 15 minutes time. Sure, not a problem. And I know there will be some people around there, around the world listening in and they will be due for going to bed shortly. So <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I've am i actually been clever enough and um, <clears throat> got a few stories of um, some of the sites. I'm trying to see which one I got this one here. I can give you another spooky one if you want. Oh, yeah, give me another spooky one and then I'll tell a story. How about that? Okay, good. Um this was spooky because I was actually, okay, I was working in Vanuatu uh, and I was, again, uh, training teachers there in Vanuatu, beautiful people, beautiful uh, mm. South Pacific island. And, uh, and what it warmed my heart there is that people were coming from different tiny islands um, to be with me in that training room and to learn with each other. And it was such a beautiful journey. But uh, one of the islands in Vanuatu called Tana, T-A-N-A, -A, it has um, a live volcano. And, um, and people were saying, no, have you been? And I said, no, I haven't. And I decided to book a trip and you need to get on a, on a, on a little airplane and get to the island and so forth. But the week before... Um, Somebody went up to that live volcano and it was badly hurt. Uh, oh. And people were saying, oh, are you going to go? And I said, I'm not sure, but I just, I just need to see. And it was spooky because, again, it was nighttime. I was sitting outdoors and this entity sat next to me and I could see the shadow. I could see the shape of a person, if you wish. Mm -hmm. And it was saying, it was saying to me, the money shot, the money shot. And I just thought, why are you saying to me the money shot? And then as a picture in my mind, it showed me the volcano. 
And I thought, okay, I don't know what the man shot is, but I'm just going to go. And, um, and I ended up going on a treacherous road for about two hours on a four-wheel drive that I think that the suspension on that four-wheel drive was gone because being tall, every time that you're going through those bumps, mm. my head was hitting the roof of the car and I said, oh my God, I'm just going to be sick of all this bumpy road getting there. Mm. But I knew that I needed to get there. So the driver took us there and it was yeah quite majestic to reach the volcano and it was... Yeah, all that black ash covering. Finally enough, there was a little mailbox at the entry of the volcano where you have steps to go up, uh, where you can post your own postcard from the volcano. And I just thought, this is just way too funny. And <laughs> they gave us as protection, and they, they call it protection. It was one of those little raincoats. You're going <laughs> onto this mighty volcano, and we reach the top and it started just brewing and spewing all this lava and all these stones and all these rocks and people were dodging and ducking and weaving because they were landing next to us wow. and oh. I just had one landing next to me but it was, I was standing there and the spooky thing is that it was I could say because that's the way that I felt I felt powerful and I felt fearless and people were trying to take shots and they couldn't get it and I just had my little digital camera and I put it in the setting for fireworks and I took a picture and as I took it and it came on the screen of the camera and people went around it and somebody said behind me oh my god bro that is the money shot <laughs> and I thought okay thank you now I get it Although I was spooked last night by what this entity was trying to tell me, but it was that idea that this was a living thing in front of me that truly uh, this volcano could have killed any of us just by spewing a rock up and hitting it on the head. But I was standing there to take a beautiful shot that it ended up on a magazine, but it was just that feeling of, I am at one and nothing is going to happen because I didn't come here with any intention but to be a part of it. And that, to me, just blew my mind. Uh, well, that's an ironical thing. It blew your mind while the volcano <laughs> was blowing its mind. Uh, I don't know. that, that, that to, to be at a, by an active volcano um, mm. spitting up rocks and stones and lava. A few weeks later, they closed and they didn't let any more people up there, but that's I was that's just... Fortunate dangerous. to be able to go. Yeah, but I, mm. I didn't. If you say to me, okay, Raul, let's go now, <laughs> I'd probably well, say, been there, done that, thank you. <laughs> well, at least you had your raincoat to protect. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, we were just laughing with this little flimsy raincoat protection, really. <laughs> Oh, that, that, that sort of, yeah, it must just be nothing, really. <laughs> Truly. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm going to tell you something a bit more spookier than that Good. part. Yeah. And yeah. I haven't actually um, figured out, I'd assume it would be off the GPS ML site. Um, now, this is a personal story from a woman that's posted on the site. And this is how it goes. What I'm about to tell you is true and that night still haunts me. My elder brother was not well and admitted to hospital, which is situated in southern part of Tamil, uh, Tamil, Tamil Nadu, India. Oh. Dad asked me to spend the night at the hospital along with my brother. We were in the third floor since the second floor was fully occupied and in a whole ward, only myself, brother and a nurse was there, where everything was normal, at least. That was what I thought. Around 11.40, both of us fell asleep. Then around 12.10, nurse woke me up and said that she would be in, a sec be in the second floor and asked me to call her if I needed something. Until this moment, everything was fine. But when the nurse left, she switched off the staircase light. Though I was half sleepy, suddenly I felt a, ch a chilled air around me and everything became so quiet. I had a strange feeling like someone was staring at me. 
I felt like someone was in the staircase steps for every second. It felt like someone was approaching towards me. I smelled something like spoiled ink. And that smell was increasingly was increasing every second. I don't know how to tell you. I can feel that uh, how to tell. I can feel that someone or something was in that staircase. First, that staircase area was like a dim light, but slowly it became pitch black. And at one time, I think I saw a dark black shadow standing there without moving, just standing. And this time, I was filled with the spoiled ink smell all around me. I felt like shouting, but I was kind of paralyzed. I couldn't even blink my eyes. But then people know what then but then don't know what happened. I passed out. I don't remember anything. But I'll never forget that smell. So if you put yourself into a, an Indian hospital, mm. I'm not sure, sure where that area was. And it's quite unusual. I've never heard of anyone speak of um, um, an off ink smell. And I think that would be a smell that not too many people would be familiar with the smell of ink. No, not at all, because I was thinking of that. I Obviously, we don't write with, um, with quills anymore. Mm, mm. Uh, well, we can actually get the smell of ink. But I've got one right ink. next to me. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know what the smell of spoiled yeah. ink will be at all. So I was just listening to that. <clears throat> so do you remember the smell of ink? Would you have used ink at all when you were younger or been yes, around? Yes, I did. Ink? I did because uh, we had... Mm. When we were doing calligraphy at school, mm. uh, we were using fountain pens because that was the idea to get a really nice handwriting. Um, and I remember the smell of ink, uh, but spoiled ink. Obviously, um, yeah, it was a bit off. Yeah, but also don't forget that in India as well, people use ink um, to produce fabric and clothing. Mm -hmm. So. Perhaps to this person, that smell is quite distinctive and they, they know uh, the smell yeah. of really good ink to, uh, in comparison to spoiled. So if you're dyeing something and you leave it in the water and then you get a warm day and it gets a bit hot, I think I know the smell that she's talking, talking mm -hmm. about. But um, that would be quite, I think in any hospital, <laughs> that would be quite spooky to actually um, see an energy like in a stairwell and it's... The fact that she passed out, that she passed out, or did she go to sleep? Um, not sure. Um, but yeah. that uh, would be a freaky experience in all of itself. <laughs> it, it will be because, as you said, particularly in a hospital, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when you've got lots of obviously passed on Ill energies. people, that, yes, exactly, mm -hmm. people that passed away, yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I remember... <laughs> Been, I've had a few hospital just you know check up procedures and stuff like that where I'm knocked out and um, <laughs> I remember one and I actually have a friend who's passed away um, probably nearly six years ago and I remember having this particular procedure and I remember I hadn't left the actual theatre itself <laughs> but I still remember asking if my friend could come with me on the trolley on the bed <laughs> while they were being to recovery and. Um, yeah, so it's amazing what energies can come through in the hospital environment. Correct, correct. The pool people, the pool nurses or doctors at the hospital, what is she on about? <laughs> well, they just think, oh, she's on the, the, on the yeah, heavy drugs. Yeah, we gave it too many, <laughs> too much. We gave it too much, yeah. So it's sort of I've have, had a few hospital experiences, but um, um, I don't know with me, maybe I just closed myself down because I actually got asked the other day about odd, uh, about do I tune in all the time to to energies around me and I'm going no because it's like I want to get on with my normal life as well um, and I think yeah, I but, used to be that way No but that's what I said to you um, with me and angels even when I don't want them they are around but you learn to actually like in life yes a, a mm. soul living a human experience you learn about boundaries and you mm. put those boundaries as well and sometimes when information has been downloaded to me, I said, okay, guys, just one moment because I'm busy with something else. Can you hold it? And then I'll go mm. for that. But yeah. yeah, otherwise you don't have a life, really. Yeah, I was actually, one of my favorite shows is The Long Island Medium. I just think she's just hilarious. But right. um, anyway, I was watching her the other day and someone said, oh, are you, 
can you turn it off? And she said, no. And I found that quite um, interesting because it's like, is that a no because she's un they're unable to or is it a choice to constantly be around? Was, I don't know. I have, I think I used to a few years ago when I wasn't fully understanding what was going on for me and I'll just be like, I could be in bed and be woken up by people, you know, energies or mm. Mm. even though I had last night, but, um, you know, like there was people around and constantly interfering and, you know, it's, it just gets tiring and it probably gets too much. Mm. And to, to me, it's like you don't get on with your normal life because we, we're, we're supposed to be living a human life as yes. well. And, yes. um, but I think it's like with anything, it's like sometimes with uh, friends or family members that they're always on your back or meddling or whatever, and you need to say, okay, just back off for a minute. Uh, mm. It's the same. Uh, same, if, yeah. If you let them, they'll be there, and they will keep on talking or appearing or showing you things. It's that sometimes you just need to say, okay, guys, give me some little space here because, yeah, I am a soul, but I'm also living a human experience. This is what I sign up to do. But, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe she's she doesn't want to turn it off. And that's, that's her right. choice. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and one thing that I was taught quite a few years ago was, like, um, at the end of the day, do you leave your front door open 24-7 and anyone can walk into it? No, you mm. don't. You actually learn to shut the door and no longer <laughs> answer it. And that's how I was taught. And perhaps that's why I'm the way, which I found that I'm less tired by mm. by shutting my front door, so to speak. <laughs> but correct, yeah. correct. Mm. But well, also we, to be able to listen to them when there's something important they need to tell you. Absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree with that 100%. Now, we're going to be going to um, break and Excellent. just in about 30 seconds. So you can find <laughs> me, Jan Jeanette Jade Psychic Medium, on Facebook. Um, if you'd like to call in, we are on um, Circle of Mediums, which is a free Skype call. Um, and just a quick, um, where people can have a quick look up of where you are, Roll, too, while we're on break. Uh, certainly they can go to crystalbluebutterfly.com.au or simply on my Facebook page, Raul Estevez Author. Awesome. So we'll see you all after the break and please watch us online.com, join in the chat room. Happy to share some info with you today and chat a bit more. Okay. We'll be right back with more from Myths and Legends. Don't go anywhere. Don't miss out on the next scary tale coming up after a short break. Join us on Sock Radio. Host your own online radio show. We welcome inquiries and ideas for your own show live right here on Sock Radio. Share your knowledge, thoughts and abilities. Bring your ideas to life here with us on Sock Radio at spiritualistonline.com. Or join any of our shows as a special guest, speaker or presenter. Check out the liveliest spiritual chat show, the Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum, a monthly discussion show, or the Circle of Mediums, a weekly show sharing spirit messages and teaching all aspects of mediumship and psychic abilities. Or join our Christina on the monthly astrology show. Contact us now at SockRadioShows at gmail.com or facebook.com forward slash SockRadio. Spiritualist Open Circle Forum Panel Show. The liveliest spiritual chat show online. The Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum Chat Show with hosts, guest speakers and panellists discussing and challenging all areas of spiritual thought, ability, knowledge and more. Ever wanted to voice your thoughts and help set standards within the field? Confront those who bring the work down or simply share your ideas and help bring spirit's work into the light of day and give spiritualism the recognition of all as a true faith and way of life? Then this is the show for you. Every last Friday of the month, 10 p.m. UK time. Join the team. Astrology Chat with Chrissy Lincoln, Psychological Body and Spirit. Monthly chat show, last Tuesday of the month, 1 to 3 p.m. New Zealand time. Jenny Lee brings you spiritual insights, covering various topics from remote viewing to her upcoming book launch. Check it all out on our schedule live in the Sock Radio chat room 
on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at tunein.com and search for Sock Radio. Join your membership on spiritualistonline.com. Join our teaching lyceum, classes and courses to certificate and diploma levels. It's an option, not an obligation. Still only £30 per year for unlimited seminars, guest sessions, members' moments, voice members included on radio chats and TV shows, full certificate courses and qualifications, members' promotions of sites, books and services, discounts on SOC services, one-on-one -on -one teaching, private classes, members-only Facebook. Upgrade your membership today. Joint family group options. See spiritualistonline.com. Advertise with Sock Radio, 10, 15, 20 or 30 second jingles, adverts or promotions, all going out live on Sock Radio. Promote your services, churches, groups or events at the best rates online. Work with us on shows or promotion and you can get your jingles absolutely free. For this and more, contact Julie at SockRadioShows at gmail.com. Join us on Sock Radio. Host your own online radio show. We welcome inquiries and ideas for your own show live right here on Sock Radio. Share your knowledge, thoughts and abilities. Bring your ideas to life with us here on Sock Radio at spiritualistonline.com. Or join any of our shows as a special guest, speaker or presenter. Check out the Lively Spiritual Chat Show, the Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum, a monthly discussion show, or the Circle of Mediums, a weekly show sharing spirit messages and teaching all aspects of mediumship and psychic abilities. Or join our Christina on the monthly astrology show. Contact us now at sockradioshows at gmail.com. Spirit Weavers with Jody White Wolf Morrison. A weekly one hour radio show, Thursdays, 8 pm UK time, featuring those who are dedicated to living their spirituality and exploring how that is woven into their everyday lives through their work, practices, and beliefs. Various SOC members from Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum sharing their abilities, knowledge, and more. Dates and times will vary. Live in the SOC Radio chat room on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at tunein.com and search for SOC Radio. Beyond the Veil with Terry Oz. Check it out first Monday, monthly, 2 p.m. UK time. Terry shares her experiences and love of spiritual communication with those from Beyond the Veil. Join us live in the SOC Radio chat room on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at tunein.com and search for Sock Radio. Spiritualist Open Circle Forum Panel Show The liveliest spiritual chat show online. The Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum Chat Show with hosts, guest speakers and panellists discussing and challenging all areas of spiritual thought, ability, knowledge and more. Ever wanted to voice your thoughts and help set standards within the field? Confront those who bring the work down or simply share your ideas and help bring spirit's work into the light of day and give spiritualism the recognition of all as a true faith and way of life. Then this is the show for you. Every last Friday of the month, 10 p.m. UK time. Join the team. Welcome back. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we will continue with more scary stories, experiences, and messages from realms yet to be explained. Welcome back. You're listening to Jeanette Jade Psychic Meeting, and you have tuned into Sock Radio. And this morning I have the lovely guest Raul Estevez, who is um, an author, as well as a, oh, I don't know, I just want to say teacher, a healer, um, and also does flower therapy, quantum bioenergetics, and angel card readings. Um, we've had an interesting conversations about all what Raul does today on the show. Um, 
and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. So welcome back, Raul, to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, right. Janet. It's been a it's been a lovely first hour, and mm. um, looking forward to um, our next hour together. I keep on thinking about because Raul, um, you just tuned in. He just shared his experience of being around an active volcano, and um, I still have images in my head, <laughs> which is ironic because <laughs> you're in these plastic raincoat things, being around an active volcano because the the, the raincoats are going to help you, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was, it, it, I, and, and as I said to you, it wasn't our idea, the tour guide that took us there. We, I've, I've asked, why are you giving us for protection? And we all burst into laughter. Uh, <laughs> it needed to be made of metal and even dull. It wouldn't help you either. No, nothing would help you. <laughs> no, not at all. Nothing, zero. Do, do you know what helped us to be fearless? We just, we just went with it and we experienced it and we are, we are back. Uh, to tell the story you are do, how far up the volcano do you go though um or did you go well we went if you can imagine like a, like a mountain we went to the mm. summit and then uh, there was an edge uh, that if you step too close it was crumbling and uh, and you could see the crater listen i saw the whole thing and, and you see that explosion of lava but beautiful beautiful red light that you see coming up mm. um, truly uh, an, an experience of a lifetime and that money shot that I took that is um, I should put it on my Facebook page for people to have yeah. a look at it because yes. it's, it's quite astonishing I said as I said to you I set the camera on fireworks on the fireworks setting and and it took an amazing shot of that of that explosion but um, I'm glad that I did it will I do it again maybe not <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't quite done the volcano thing, but I remember swimming from Rangitoto Island in New Zealand across to St Helier's Beach, and um, they drop you off on, on this island. It's, people don't live on there. It's a protected island. And swimming back, and I just, as soon as I got back to the beach, it's like, I've done it, but I'm never going to do it again because... <laughs> The things that you experience in the water, one jellyfish in your face, black shadows in oh, the water mm. underneath you. Um, there happened to be a Mako shark around at the same time and, and my friends all in the newspaper, Jeanette's swimming buddy, so I had that in my head the whole time. So it's like <laughs> I've done it, I've completed that, those sea swims, that's it, never doing it again. But um, it's, but it, it, going back to your volcano thing, it's sort of um, quite amazing to be able to have the opportunity to see something like that and the fact that you're actually having trust in mother nature because they're I, very unpredictable i know i've also shot a little video on my digital camera at the time and i and i put it up on facebook because one of my sisters lives in the u.s and uh and she was saying to me, are you bloody crazy? What the hell were you doing up there? Because you could hear the explosions. And I was pointing the camera up and you can see rocks landing next to us. <laughs> and oh, I said to her, wow. you know what? I, I was just, I was in the moment and I didn't have any fear. It was truly just that sense of Magical. being fearless. But and when I'm talking about fearless, it's not about being brave. Here I am, look at me mm. and I don't mm. care. You were in that moment and you knew intrinsically that nothing was going to happen to you. Mm. Amazing. And the thing is, too, with things like that, with another nature, they're so absolutely amazing and stunning and the colours, but how um, destructive something so beautiful can be as well. But also on the flip side of that coin, Jeanette, um, the tribes around the volcano they were able to grow amazing crops because of mm, volcanic. Uh, correct. Mm, so and, it, yeah. it is dangerous, but it also brings life into it. That's right, because with New Zealand being <laughs> volcanoes everywhere, mm. and I think we're funny. I think there may be one slightly active that still rumbles away. Can't remember which mm. one it is, but um, you know we grew around a volcanic, you know, dormant. Well, no longer active mm. volcanoes but there was always a thing that i was growing up with oh we've got very good volcanic soil and you would always get good harvests out of the soil Correct. and um it, it's very true um here in 
where I am here in Australia, um, I have some Pacific Island friends and we did a um, an omu, which is in the ground cooking yes. food, and we got all the rocks and heated them all, sort of almost like mm. a, um, a, a friendlier version of volcanic sort of heated rocks, yes. <laughs> to speak. But it creates that sort of um, essence in the ground where you get really good soil and, yes. yeah, again, grew really good um you know, out of that soil that I got grows better um, produce and stuff. But, um, oh, no, that's incredible. I'd love to see those photos. So just just pop in where people can find you. So maybe you might just pop in that um, um, I'll, photo. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll put them on if people go to Raul Estevez author. Uh, later on today I will, uh, I will put a couple of those. And if I can get the video happening there, I'll put it so people can experience from the, through the lens of the camera what I saw. Oh, I look forward to do that. So I'll I'll check it out later on this uh, afternoon. Hopefully, uh, you can pop something out. I'll tag you. You tag me. Sounds good. Yes. Sounds <laughs> good. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go and pop in here now, just to let everyone know that um, if you want some spooky stories, um, there's some really good sites that we follow through um, Sock Radio here. Now, one of them is called Tell Me a Ghost Story. If you type that into your search on Facebook and put that at all in capital letters, tell me a ghost story. Now, this page actually has um, EVPs. It also has um, film footage of people sort of filming ghosts, paranormal, etc. There's also some stories. There's links to YouTube, etc. So that's a really, like, if you want to be really spooked out, go to that page it's so cool um also gpsml ghost the paranormal supernatural myths and legends also it has some really awesome stories on there whether they are myths whether they're legends um there's also people asking um advice about their own experiences or sharing their experiences so you can join into those pages and um especially if you're going to bed at night go and give yourself a spook out and um so i'm going to actually going to read um a story and this is of Tell Me a Ghost Story. And it's by Christy, Christy Joe's popped this in. Now Christy Joe, I know she's on both those sites. So I'll just um, read through this for you. In 1971, the Perron family moved into a charm house home on the old Arnold estate in Harrisville, Rhode Island. From the start, the mother, Carolyn, was very focused um, was the focus for paranormal events, starting with her awakening to the woman in a grey dress, telling her to get out, get out. I'll drive you out with death and gloom. And from there, things escalated quickly with pinches, slaps, burning and stabbing sensations. Alongside strange noises in the night, floating objects and levitating beds. Paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren were called in and quickly identified the cellar as a hot spot and Carolyn as the focus for the haunting of a spirit named Bathsheba Thaya, who had crushed the house, or had cursed the house, excuse me, in the 19th century. Bathsheba Thaya had married Judson Sherman on March 10th, 1844, and sometime after came to live at the old Arnold estate. The first child of the couple died and Bathsheba was charged with its murder. Her baby's body had been found impaled in the head with a sharp object. Locals and the authorities alike believed that the murder had been a sacrifice, sacrifice to Saturn and that Bathsheba herself was practicing satanicist. The case was eventually dropped due to the lack of evidence and Bathsheba lived the rest of her life as an outcast from the community. She died by hanging herself from the tree behind the house. The coroner wrote that upon examination of her body, he had never seen anything like it. Like it. Her emaciated body had solidified, seemingly turned into stone. As the paranormal activity intensified, the Warrens visited the Perron family throughout the 1974 and worked on cleansing the building, but only seemed to anger the spirits. In the end, the family stayed in the house until they were able to sell in 1980, but continued to experience a milder haunting even afterwards. 
Now, I do have some photos here that I can share with um, online onto the chat room um, that we can pop up. Oops, I've sent them to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've sent it to Tracy, um, who's um, producing us today. Actually, I think I've heard that story before, but um, I'm just I'd be interested if this is, in fact, a true story, whether or not that um, that body is still, if it is solidified and if they've got it anywhere, um, like in, what do you call it, a, um, a museum or anything like that, if it still exists, in fact. So that's quite interesting. I don't know. Very I've never spooky. lived in. I've, I, well, I haven't lived in a spooky haunted house that I know of. I know I live in an, a house that does have a little bit of activity, but it's not haunted as such. If you know what I mean? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm often aware of. Um, I feel like there's just family just hanging around. Nobody, nobody um, spooky. If that makes sense. <laughs> I, I felt perhaps presence of um, people that they passed over um, when I went to um, to Tasmania to Port Arthur and I was there before before that horrible um, massacre that took place mm -hmm. many years ago but you could get the sense of um, yeah that spirits around you of that those, those people that they live in that situation for for many years uh, centuries before us and uh, yeah, that's yeah. I you hear a few people. I've heard a few people talk about going to the, around the Port Arthur area. So I've I've not been to Tasmania, but um, never know one day. And I think if I did go that way, it would be interesting to see what those sort of areas are like. Um, probably that I used to hang around where I lived in New Zealand. We lived right next door to a huge cemetery, like a really, really, really old one. And I used to so enjoy um, reading people's um, gravestones. Um, you know, they range from all sorts of age groups. I was never really scared. I think there's more scary things that were in the cemetery. Like we <laughs> had a hermit. <laughs> he used to hang out. <laughs> yes, he used to um, shoot the, the kids walking past <laughs> with the salt pallet gun. But he was probably the most <laughs> spookiest. <laughs> but um, you know, I was always intrigued. And I know it sounds a bit macabre, but um, we had, you know, the big concrete sort of tombstone. Uh, not tombstones, but like the, the, the graves were like concreted. And because we had a lot of landslides, quite frequently you would see right down deep into – and, like, these these graves were very, very old. But I was always really intrigued as to what's still down there and everything like that. I was never freaked out. And I used to – our house originally was right next to the cemetery, but when we bought our house, the people who owned it obviously cross-leased it and, um, you know, divided the property up, and they built their house right next to the cemetery, even closer. But I used to babysit over there, but I was never, ever spooked out. Yes. I, I used to find um, when I was, because my parents divorced when I was at high school and going through all that sort of stuff, I used to find it quite peaceful going sitting in the cemetery and just, especially on a sunny day and sort of, <laughs> now that I think about it, I used to chat to the people. Like I had a few particular stones that I would actually go and just have conversations with. My late but grandmother used to say, don't be spooked out by a cemetery. These people are passed on, and the energy is good. Be spooked out by the people that are alive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right there. <laughs> yeah, the people that are alive are more spooky than those that are passed on. <laughs> I, it, but, sometimes I think it's a well, and I don't want to sound um, insulting, but sometimes it's, our lack of knowledge, our ignorance, that it takes us into a place of fear because we don't really comprehend what is taking place, if you mm. know what I mean. Mm. And I think it's um, it's quite a fascinating thing. I think my thoughts on death has really shifted as I've come more into this sort of side of the things with um whether it being medium, working with energy and all those sorts of things and just seeing things so differently. Um, 
I mean, I don't I don't want to die just yet because I think I've got plenty more things to do and I want to be around a bit longer for my children. But at the same yes. time, I don't think, oh, you know, when the time comes, who knows, I might be. But I, at the moment, it's like I don't think I'll be really scared. I think if I've done what I needed to do here and that I've <laughs> – it's almost like I need to teach my family that, you know, even if I do pass on, I'm still going to be around. And, yes. um and, and having that trust and faith and stuff like that. And um, <clears throat> I've actually had a conversation frequently with a couple of people about, um, and actually my 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 husband lost his mum last June and Mother's Day we all went to the cemetery and you know, I, I, I seriously, I loved my mother-in-law and everything like that. But even, even I knew in like the conversations that I have with her is like, Actually, I'm not really there. That's just my hum- That's just my meat suits there. Well, what's yes. left of it? You know, my yes. souls. My souls here, like his sisters, like wanting to go and, you know, you go to the graveyard. And I actually even had this with a client the other day. It's like, well, we're actually not there. We're here around you. And it's like, do a little um, uh, little thing in front. You, know, you see every day, like I have with my mother-in-law. I've got her favorite. I've got a cross of hers and some candle things, and that's where we, where I talk to her. And so yes. when we had to go to the cemetery, it's like, I, I don't want people going to cemetery. Well, I'm not going to be in a cemetery anyway. I'm going to be a tree. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to be in one of those pods that grows into a tree. But it's, it's, um, yeah, we we think so differently by going to a grave site. That that's where they were last buried. But you know what? Their soul wasn't there when it was buried. No. Their souls around us. And um, okay, I'm just trying to see what we've got here. Just for, um, just reading what people are putting on the um site. There's Halfing to has just visited a few graveyards today, and James has used dowsing rods in the cemetery with amazing effects. And I'm assuming, James, that you're talking about um, dowsing rods and cemeteries as in picking up energies? Yes, it will be. Do you know what interests me about whether picking up energies around cemeteries is um, when we go and bury our loved ones, we take in so much of our energy and we imprint it there as well. So it's almost like the soul of the person who's passed on knows that that it's almost like a group gathering of energy too yes um and it's sort of almost like that was the last place that they were all together i'm just getting some internet a cemetery is one of the most safest places one can be never anything to fear at all Mm. i used to live in a place where it had its own wee cemetery five graves all dated back 1844 to 1902 that's witchy poo how cute is that (laughs) Oh my goodness, that is so cute. I'd want to go visit that too and plant some plant little flowers and stuff. Um, Halfing. I was too busy straining to get my wheelchair through the cemeteries to look for spirits. Lumpy ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be. And James, he's actually said yes, and he actually channeled a person who had passed and was still there in the cemetery. A friend of mine was really wanting information on what happened after passing. Mm. I think it's pretty quite cool um, when you can communicate. Do, do you often communicate with those who have passed on, Raul? Um, it, it really depends if I'm doing a reading for somebody else, uh, whether there's somebody there that really wants to uh, to use me as a channel of communication to come through. And sometimes they can and sometimes they choose not to. But one thing that I do communicate with is with a uh, with souls that they're close to me. Like, to give you an example, my relationship with my father while he was alive was rather rocky. And once he passed away, um, that relationship became really fluid. Uh, Mm. We're able to have a really good conversation. And that idea that at the beginning he said to me, you know what, Raul, I'm terribly sorry, but at the time I did the best uh, with what I had and what I knew. And mm. now that I'm on the other side of things, I can see it all much more clearly. And, and, and yes, he offered an apology, but it's kind of like a two-way street. You also got a, a part to play. But that relationship became um, perhaps that relationship that I always wanted and I didn't have while he was alive. So I'm really grateful that he's able to, um, to communicate with me uh, in such a level now. And do you, do you often communicate with him? Um, like now? 
most of the time, most of the time. Mm. And usually if I'm seeking out um, perhaps some guidance, some advice, and, uh, and I just, yeah, he comes through and he, he shows me things. And um, he was between, well, there were three, between my, my late grandmother, his mother, himself and my mom. They show me um, the cover of my first book. And mm. what was intriguing about this is that when I talked to my friend, the illustrator, I said to her, listen, I want, it's going to be called My Angel's Connections, but I want something that is strong, that is powerful. And I said, I've already seen it. I've already seen the cover of the book. But I'll leave, I'll leave you with that. And uh, you just get back to me when you when you got something to show me. And the minute that she showed me the cover, I burst into tears because it was exactly what uh, my parents wow. and, and grandmother were showing me that she created. And... Yeah, it's all like truly um, amazing. And, and it's a really amazing when you do realise that you are being guided by spirit, whether they're your loved one or, or your guides or whatever. It's just incredible, isn't it? And how if, if we're communicating this side and putting it out there and they collectively come together and bring it forward. And it's, um, I think it's quite an amazing I get intrigued by how putting things out there and how you can start seeing them coming into place um, and why you do um, certain things that don't quite work for you. But while you're doing that, you meet all these different other people that put the other pieces of the puzzle together. I'm finding that out now through something that I did last year and I sort of really struggled getting into it. I mean, one pain for it, like I keep rejecting for some reason. And it, every time I keep trying to pay it, like through different stages, I keep rejecting. But I still ended up doing this particular thing. But through that, I met a certain person. And then through that, I've got onto the show. And through that, I met other people who I now communicate with a lot more. So it's really an amazing when you say, this is what I want and how do I get it? And then the more that you ask, the more that you're given the doors that open to where you need to be. Sometimes it does take a long time to get there. Um, and uh, it took me <clears throat> it took me 53 years to get to publish any books. And in the space of nine months, I published three. So there you have it. Wow. It's about being at the right t- at the right place at the right time. And if you say to me oh, do you want to write a book 20 years ago? I would have said, no. no. I'm interested in traveling around and going and experience the world. And you know what? That was what I did, and it was right at the time. And there was no need to um, to question it. But mm. also, <clears throat> the idea, pardon me, when you get to a point that you no longer question what is being given to you, but you also know that you need to take action steps, yes? Mm -hmm. Because being shown the cover of my book doesn't mean that the book is just going to materialize. It means that I'm going to have to put some effort into it. Absolutely. I'm going to have to write it. Uh, Yes. But the the idea of the cover is that I never told Sonia, Sonia Daru, my illustrator, and dear, dear friend, uh, I never told her, what it actually looked like. I just said I want something modern and strong. And yeah, she couldn't believe when she showed me that. She said, why are you crying? It's it ugly. And I said, no, it's because I've seen it. And because I didn't tell you what I saw and you just produced this, it's just pure confirmation that what, what it was shown to me, it, I wasn't just going bonkers in my mind. You know what I mean? Mm. Absolutely. And how long did it take to um, write your books once you okay. started deciding you wanted to write one? Um, I started the first one, My Angel's Connections. I started writing that book probably about, let me just think, six years ago. And okay. my partner bought me this beautiful blue um, journal made of uh, recycled leather and it has a beautiful lock at the front of the journal and it has mm. all all the pages are recycled paper. So Lovely. I started writing on that. And I got to a point that I thought, oh, maybe I need to get in touch with publishers. And I got in touch with major publishers and 
none of them resonated with me. And I just put that journal inside the safe because I wanted to keep it safe. And funnily enough, um, in 2013, something happened to me that it rocked truly my world. It put it upside down. And to get out of that darkness, I started, con or I continue writing more about that book. And uh, sometimes people talk about Facebook, that is, oh, Facebook is not great, and la, la, la. And to me, it was the way that I found my publisher, Wildlife Publishing House, because they put an, a post up there for a competition, and I was voting for somebody that I knew. And mm. when I saw White Light Publishing, I thought, hmm, White Light, I better investigate a little bit more. The reason about White, <clears throat> that it has, pardon me, that it has some... Um, a connotation with me is that my mother's name in Spanish, Blanca, that translates it's into white. English as white. Oh, so wow. it was the guidance that I was receiving. And I started talking to Christy Lyons, the director of the publishing house. And, um, and there it went. Um, my angel connections came um, to fruition, came to life, and it was published, and it was well received, and it's going around the world, and I received... Uh, reviews from people that I have not met and that they were kind enough to send me a message on Facebook or an email to tell me how much I touch their hearts with my short stories, which sometimes you go into that place of doubt, who am I to do this? And I remember talking to, uh, to an angel and the angel said to me, you know what, Raul, if you help somebody, just one person with that book, job well done. So mm. I went with it. And later on, the other day, I was watching a program that my publisher was being interviewed about the publishing house, and it was, which I didn't know at the time. And she acknowledged at that point in time, she said, my publishing house exploded in a really good way with excellent positive energy after Raul came on board and we published his first book and now we got like 30 authors on board. And it's what you were saying just before, Janet, that things come into alignment, synchronicity, and you cannot avoid it but follow that. And when you, when you follow that, you are helping somebody else at the same time. And uh, I didn't know about that, what Christy thought about me coming on to her publishing house. And suddenly you realize, well, we're all connected. We are all one. And we can coexist. We can still be amazing and unique as, as the beautiful Australian wildflower, the Warata. Beautiful and unique, but you can still bring something onto the table to help somebody else and to be part of that oneness that we talk about. Oh, absolutely. And that's something that I was actually in my thoughts before I went to sleep last night was actually our purpose of being here. Um, <clears throat> same sort of thing as like, at the end of the day, we, we are, each and every one of us, we are here to teach even just one person, if not ourselves. Yes. But yes. even in teaching ourselves, we always touch at least one person in our whole entire lifetime and make a difference in their lives whether it's for them to say, well, you know, you had a really bad experience. I can relate to that. I don't want to end up the same way as you, even if it's that way or, you know, look at you go, you've had a really bad, hard, hard upbringing and you're just taking the bull by the horns and just run with it. You know, whatever it is or whether you give yes. them a healing or whatever, it's just that one reading, whichever format that you do it. Um, we are, you know, or even to be honest and, 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 this is another thing I was thinking about is like maybe your purpose was only just to bring um, a life into this world. And I was also thinking about the, you know, you, you hear of mums who pass away, bless them all, you know, as they pass away when they're giving birth, but the child, you know, survives. It's like that was your life purpose, bringing forward a life into this world. Whichever format that it may be, we are all here in one way or another to help another soul as well as our own souls. Yes. And, um, and yeah, and it's just a matter of just coming together and it's just sort of like m me and you meeting each other. It's sort of like, what do you learn from me? What do I learn from you? And, mm. and, and actually not hearing what the other person, but actually truly listening to 
No, hang on a minute. Which is where I'm listening. You can hear the words, but are you really listening to what's being said um, and actually uh, digesting words and people's expressions, people's and just digesting them for yourself as to what benefit you can have in your own life or what benefit you can take from that and actually help somebody else along the line, if that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just call it listening with your body. Mm. Um, it's not just your ears, it's not just listening to the words, but it's truly aligning yourself with that other person and, and mm. truly feeling it. And when you are in that flow, um, I don't know whether you, are, you read that book, um, James Redfield, The uh, Celestine Prophecy, and yes, they, I did. They, yes, they did a movie. I don't know whether you watched it. No, I didn't um, see the movie. Uh, it's out there on DVD. I got it with me, oh. and it's beautiful. And they managed to to bring that that idea of that exchange of energy. That when mm. you are in that sense of that flow, that you are listening to one another. You are not trying to overpower. You are not competing for <clears throat> to have your say. Uh, it's simply the person listens, respond, and then you respond again. And yeah, I, I just love that. And that that is a really big thing. I mean, I know that I myself, you know, especially when you're around your family, you're sort of like, no, but I need my words to be heard. Um, mm. But it is. It's like once you start learning the 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 benefits of actually listening and hearing the like listening to the actual essence of what's being put across mm. and it, like i said it's like listening with your body listening with your you know with your eyes listening with your ears listening with mm. the vibrational things and it's like i find myself as a person i'm highly um mis mis oh, what's the word the word's gonna run out like people think completely different about what I'm actually putting across. <laughs> I've lost misunderstood, my word. really. Misunderstood. That's such an easy word to remember. But yeah, <laughs> but misunderstood. And um, and even if I question, because I like to question things purely for my own um, my own understanding and it gets yes. misconstrued as something completely different. So they're actually not actually listening to what I'm presenting. It's more uh, the defense comes up. But um, I've learned to sort of just leave them to it. Yep. And if they give me the way to be able to say, well, actually, no, this is what I meant. Um, yeah, I've found that many, many times over my lifetime as people just completely misunderstand the way I am. And you know what? I'm not changing that because, you know what, this is this is my language and um, it has altered as, as I've learnt from those around me as well. But that's my choice of learning. But um, it, it's, it's amazing to have mm. that ability to listen and digest, I suppose, if there, if you want to say for a word, digest what's being presented to you. And also um, allowing that information that is presented to you to uh, to really resonate with you without having to go into a, a straight answer. Sometimes a little bit of silence mm. in between is as important. It's, it's such an important part of the communication, and. My sister Marilyn, my elder sister that, that is in the States, she's like you, a Reiki master. And and we always talk to one another and she shares things. And she always says to me, sometimes, because you were saying before, I want my voice to be heard. And it happens to all of us. And she says to me, well, remember when people are talking and, and you really want to interject because you want your voice to be heard and your opinion is important. Just think for a minute. Mm. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Mm. Because sometimes you want to interject to put your opinion forward because you think that you are right over the other person. And at the end of the day, everybody's right because if that's what you believe in, who am I to contradict you? But at the end of the day, it's maintaining that harmony of being happy with people perhaps disagreeing with you. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, I think my, my younger son, my sons get this from me, but sort of, do you call it challenge? <laughs> Do I call it question? But it's sort of like if something's not quite sort of like you're listening to what they're saying, it's like, well, it's not quite sort of, you know, coming together. So a question a bit more. Um, and I am known in my husband's family <laughs> and in my own, I think, as um, 
well, they call me opinionated, but if they really listen to what it is, it's not so much opinionated. It's um, the it's maybe the knowledge that I have for myself. Um, I also like to look outside of the box. So it's like, well, this is my view. What's your view? Um, and looking further than like expanding on what they think. So I think completely different to some of the people I have conversations with, as hence the reason I do this. But, um, but you know, they still come around and talk to me and all that. But it's like, well, you know what, if there's there's something going on and it's like, well, like I'm going to keep pushing the buttons to expand that horizon even further, then um, <laughs> I tend to do that. <laughs> but it's not out of like, I want to be heard. It's like, well, you know, I, I enjoy the conversation and I enjoy expanding it out. So, not everybody enjoys that, though. <laughs> no, and uh, and that's that's a fine the, the fine line and the balance that we all mm. need to find. Mm. Um, and and you know what, we are unique and we're still part of the same. Um, Jolly Morrison the other day was sharing with us and talking about that cherry pie, and we all bring different ingredients in order mm. for that cherry pie to be beautiful and tasty. So let's be happy with being different and then coming together in order to to put something that it will be beautiful for everybody to see. <gasps> and, and and talking about just beautiful things to see, if you've just gone and put up Mount Yasu, Tana <laughs> Island Vanuatu, <gasps> isn't that a ma- Oh, my goodness. That is magical. <laughs> So if anybody's on the chat room or if you want to quickly go on there, spiritualsonline.com and um, James, why have I said James? <laughs> James, you're talking to me <laughs> through my <laughs> through, through the uh, vibrations of the uh, <laughs> outer world. Um, Raul's put up this beautiful picture. I like the way that you've um, put it into these different shapes. Isn't that amazing? I have to go and what if I can – oh, you can um, – and you can see the money shot there in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely amazing. And also when you see the smoke there, we were standing on that ledge. <laughs> really? Yeah, and- that's how I took that picture. I needed to go close to the ledge to see <laughs> the crater of the volcano and see the explosion. And <laughs> Human curiosity. And that, can we- yeah, and that can weave all the rocks that were flying around us. Uh, that is so funny. It's like and I put a little volcano post because I thought this is just, I'm going to come all the way here to put a postcard. Are you kidding me? That is so <laughs> funny. Um, I'm saving it to my desktop so I can actually enlarge it a bit more because it just comes up small on here. But um, that is so cool. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Not a problem. Pleasure. That is so neat. Um, oh, gosh, we've only got less than ten, just over 10 minutes left. On our, Time um, flies when you're having fun. <laughs> there you go. That's um, I've just been meaning to ask you all this time is flower therapy. If you are able to just sort of, we don't have much more than um, ten minutes to talk about That's this. Okay. But flower, flower therapy. I'm quite intrigued by flower therapy. What do you do and how do you go about that? Okay, flower therapy is the. The, truly the art with working with flowers and the flower essence, but also I connect with the angelic energy that each flower has, yes, in order to, uh, to help the individual. And you can work with perhaps photos, yes, photographs of real flowers, okay. uh, not paintings, or even better, the actual, the actual flower. For example, if I was going to say to you, okay, well, we need to work around your aura because it seems to be a bit scattered and gaps in between. In order to purify your aura, I will work with the white rose. The white rose is a beautiful fragrant rose as well, but it brings that energy, that angelic energy of cleansing and purification. And a little exercise that I will give you and the listeners out there with purification and the white rose. If you have access to a white rose, um, if you have a bush at your home, please ask 
the bush permission to cut a couple of the roses. And usually the permission is granted, it's not an issue, but don't just go with the scissors and cut. Do like a little ceremony saying thank you for allowing me to bring the white rose into my environment. And then bring the rose inside and just gently take the petals of the rose and on your bed, actually unmade, not made, unmade bed, just scatter the petals wherever they will land on your bed and leave them for the day. And in the evening, come back. And if the petals are actually wilted and all was for wear, that's excellent because it has actually cleansed your bed. It has lifted all that unwanted energy that you probably go to bed with that you don't need anymore. And then you just put them in a little bowl and go outside and return them into a garden bed to Mother Nature to just recycle that with that that feeling of gratitude for the purification that that white rose brought to your environment. Oh, I've never heard of that at all. And there is it you just, have it. And is it just always um, the white roses? Or do oh, you no, 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 no. Listen, no. we can use, for example, <laughs> if we are looking at somebody says, um, I have a block with my abundance. Okay. A flower to utilize for abundance is actually the yellow lily. So oh. if you have yellow lilies at home, or perhaps you go to a lovely florist and buy some yellow lilies, buy a bunch that it has some of them open and some of them not yet open. So um, whisper into the little unopened bud of the yellow lily, yes, a mm. message of love and abundance. Um, I usually say to people, please don't ask <laughs> to win lotto. Just mm -hmm. ask for pure abundance to surround your life because when you ask for that, you're going to notice that financial abundance will raise, that your health will raise. All of the different areas that you will need, abundance in love, abundance in caring, abundance in you offering help and receiving help. So the yellow lily is a flower that it denotes abundance energetically and the beauty of it so bring that into your environment <clears throat> pardon me and use it in such a way if you are looking for example you are having problems sleeping there are a couple of flowers one that is commonly known lavender and that you can put that in your pillow to help you relax and sleep but another one that you don't you could have the plant by itself on your bedside table in a little pot or you may have a picture of the plant, and it's the um, African violet. Oh, the African yes. violet has the energy to help you drift into a beautiful sleep and sleep calmly. I tried looking for one of them, um, I think, earlier this year or end of last year, but it was the wrong season for it. Yes. And I haven't gone back to try and find because I always had them, always had them. Well, if you can have a, either a real picture or a little pot next to your bedside table, it will allow you to really sleep peacefully. Oh, now I've got here Helf, Helfing on um, the chat room. She said she's they're smelling some good flower fragrances on the air right now. There are so many things blooming. Yes. And that's what we are doing at the graveyards today. We are planting flowers on graves beautiful oh, and, so. uh, and many cultures that actually do that they water the grave and they plant flowers because then the flower is alive you don't need to take cut flowers and put it in yes. your vase that it will just wilter away because when the flower actually is on the graveyard and dies it goes back into the earth and then it's actually reborn once again so mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing to do and yeah. um, for people yeah. that live perhaps in the in an, in the South Pacific or in a culture that actually um, or in a country that has the climate that allows that flower to come in is the hibiscus and South mm. Pacific Islands and the hibiscus Beautiful. brings the angelic energy of unity and uh, and that's what you see many of females and even males wearing a hibiscus flowers on their ear. I know. That to them have a, a different meaning, but mm. the energy of the flower is about unity. Yeah, I think it's all about the, the flowers and the ears. You wear it on one side if you're single, one in the other yes, ear if you're correct. married. 
<laughs> Correct. <laughs> but um, yeah, flowers bring many different things. But in regards to planting at um, grave sites, I know with where my mother-in-law and my father-in-law are both buried, um, I mentioned that to my in-laws. I said, why don't we just plant something there? And they said, well, you're not allowed to. Um, so in many, many cemeteries in Australia, no, you're not. The mm. same happened. My mom and dad are buried in Sydney and um, no, you are not. Uh, in that cemetery, that is a different one. They allowed a little bit. Some people sometimes, if they are, if they were young children that passed away, they put little toys and all of that, and mm. they allowed that. But beyond mm. that, mm, you, you, they just give you a little plastic vase and you put cut flowers in it, and that's it. Yeah, it's really tiny. Well, see, like I like the idea of um, I spoke with Mikasa, but um, the what I you can get these pods. One you can put your whole body into it, yes. and then it gets planted into the ground, and then it's in fact will decompose, obviously, and then grows a flat tree. But there's also you can be um, I think it's cremated and put into it almost looks like a coffee cup of something you know the takeaway cup sort of yes. thing but it's an and it's it's biodegradable etc and um there's actually a seeds in there as well and they grow into trees so that's that's ideally what i would like to so i have to find some links for my family so when that comes around um yeah i, I, I want to i think i've you know been on earth long enough i think <laughs> my yes. bits going in the ground is something different i'd like to be able to be a tree and grow into and something a bit more. Yeah, and it's a beautiful thing because, um, yeah, the tree of life. Mm, um, absolutely. And, and for people out there and for you, uh, and I, I don't even know whether you know, but the nature of the tree of life, if you ever have a look at a picture, uh, a medical picture of a placenta after the, the mm. mother has been given birth, um, the umbilical cord or that part of the umbilical cord becomes the trunk and then the branches is where the baby was actually feeding through. And mm. it's quite amazing to see that, that people talk about the tree of life. And, and I'm not surprised that you wanted to be a tree because you have already given life and you are continuing to give life through that tree. Oh, that's so beautiful. I never thought of that. Wow. Have a look, Google it, um, mm. tree of life, and you will see, look at pictures, and you will see that, yeah, mother's placentas will, will be taken Somebody has taken pictures, probably doctors. Yeah. And yeah. that's the essence of the tree of life. Thing. Tree of life. Oh, yeah. What would actually be um, – and is that where that's come from? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Possibly, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, if we go also the custodian of the tree of life, if we talk about angels, is Archangel Metatron. And Archangel mm. Metatron usually has that cube or that geometrically um, flower of life that comes from the tree of life. But uh, in human terms, the tree of life is a mother. Wow. I didn't know that. That's really interesting because I always thought everybody has to wear a tree of life because everyone's got a tree of life dangling around their neck. Mm -hmm. And I never sort of like, but because uh, I'm just thinking, is that everyone being spiritual? I wasn't quite sure what the thing is. It seemed to be like a really, I don't want to say the word trendy, but it seems to be quite trendy. Mm -hmm. Everyone has got one. Um, yes. But yeah, but now the, the whole meaning of it, so to bring that into my own area in a different format would be really quite amazing. Correct. And also to, uh, to, um, to validate your idea that you want to come back as a tree, uh, meaning that you are already a tree of life, but you want to come back as an actual tree in a garden, that you're still giving life. Mm. And you're giving life to, to other beings, to birds and to... Oh, everything, yeah, and from else. the soil. From and oxygen soil. to us human beings. Absolutely. Go on go on healing healing Correct. what's around me. Correct. <laughs> and nurturing as well. Nurturing. So yes. And nurturing. Oh, that does I'm gonna have to have a, a bit of a Google time and, and look into that a bit more, the regions of um the tree of life. Thank you mm. for sharing that with me. That's Pleasure. see you learn we you learn something every day. Always, always. <laughs> <laughs> that's so neat but we're actually only two minutes away from the end of our two hour show today my um, goodness I know it's gone really quickly it's like first of all it was like 15 minutes like now there's only two um, I have ha been 
this is the thing that I love about doing this show, even though, you know, we've only had a couple of spooky stories, but it's everyone brings something different to it. Mm. And um, I find for myself, I'll learn so much more, it widens my horizons, it widens my eyes, my knowledge, whatever it may be, it sort of and connects with different people. Um, so I've really, really appreciated you taking the time out of your day today and and sharing your amazing stories and what you do and everything with us today, Roel. Um, it has been a pleasure, Janet, and thank you for inviting me and for holding a space with me because that's that's rather important. And mm. sometimes we tend to be busy with life in so many different ways and it's important to take time out and perhaps do the sort of things. And, and I encourage people to uh, to perhaps get in touch with you and, and, and chat and perhaps come on the show and, and, and share different stories that it will help somebody else in a different way to not be Absolutely. shy. Absolutely. Absolutely, and that's one of the reasons why I did it, to sort of get me out of my little box. Yes, it's like, oh, yes. talking to all these different people that I don't know and what am I going to talk about, but it right. seems to be okay. So you can I've find – sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, you can find me, Janet Jade, Psychic Medium, on Facebook. Um, and whereabouts can we find you, Raul, just to go well, through that I, again? I, I was just going to say before I forget, but I've been uh, yep. extremely uh, grateful that SOC Radio has uh, – um, giving me my own radio show. So starting this Wednesday, the 24th of May, uh -huh. at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, um, I'll have a, a show called Angels Connection. So we'll be talking about all things angels. And oh, in the first show, it will be an hour, and I'll be just introducing myself and talking about a few different things. But then in uh, months to come, we'll be... Uh, will be having a chat with many different people that they bring different things into the angel realm. Awesome. And what day was it? Sorry, Raul? Uh, 7 p.m. Wednesday. Well, in Australia, will be Wednesday yeah. the 24th, yeah. which is this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern. And, uh, and also they can find me, as we said, on crystalbluebutterfly.com.au and on Facebook, Raul Esteves, author, and if you go there, you will see the the pictures of the volcano. They're up now. Oh, that's incredible. It's like <laughs> so cool. It's so cool. I can share mine. The only exciting story, hopefully, I can share it at some stages after I come back from my trip because I'm going to to visit Komodo Island. We'll be around the Komodo dragons. Oh, so, that will be brilliant. <laughs> and so I'm excited, and all the sea life that we get to see while we're there as well. Mm, so indeed. hopefully, yeah, that's awesome. So thank you so much once again, and I hope everybody has a wonderful week. And thank you for tuning in to those who are on um, the spiritualsonline.com on the chat room. Appreciate all your feedback there today. That's been awesome. And your connections, anybody out there listening, also appreciate you tuning in today. And again, thank you, Raul. And we'll see everybody. We'll talk to everybody next month. Thank you for listening to Tales from Ghosts, the Paranormal, Supernatural, Myths and Legends. Check out these and more at our Facebook group. See you next week for more. SpiritualistsOnline.com Online since 2002 Teaching all aspects of personal and spiritual development Free to all with audio video chat rooms Members forums And SOC radio live shows on site The Spiritualist Online Network And Lyceum A global oasis for spiritual awareness Development Attainment Imparting Knowledge Thoughts Ideas to inspire One site Linking a whole network of spiritually informative, educational and interactive services. Encompassing every faith, path, walk, religion as one.